Councilwoman Darmenio. Here. Councilman Garrett. Here. Councilman Accomando is unable to be here this evening. Councilman Mesa. Here. Council Presidents. Please rise. Please rise to the slide. Please remain standing after the pledge uh, in honor of our former police officer who recently passed away, uh, Benny Azaro, founder of uh, SBTV. Pledge of allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Adequate notice of this meeting has been sent to all council members and to all legal newspapers in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, and in consideration of Executive Order Number 103, issued by Governor Murphy on March 9, 2020, declaring a state of emergency, a public health emergency in the state of New Jersey. The public is hereby advised that any statements made during the meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Southwark may not be privileged or protected and that persons or entities who take issue with such comments or are offended by saying may and have in the past, so that we will redress through the courts. Any member of the public who addresses the council speaks for themselves, not for the council. Okay. Before we uh, open the meeting to the public, we have some presentations. I believe from the county, we have, what is it? It's not freeholder anymore, right? Still until January 1. Still. Yeah. Freeholder, Steve Dinelli. Freeholder, Tracy Zerk. Good friends, come up. Uh, you want to? Yeah, yeah, I want to. I'm going to get up. Council I'll, I'll leave it. To, I'll uh, turn it over to the mayor. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, as mayor, this is one of my favorite things to do uh, to recognize an employee or a resident or anyone for doing something extraordinary. So, tonight, I want to introduce you to police officer Kimberly Diaz. Kim, come on up. Recently, Kim rescued a teenager who was threatening to jump off the bridge onto Route 46. She remained very calm and began a dialogue with the teen and was able to gain the teen's trust and talk them down. Um, I want to thank, before I forget, I do want to thank all the rest of the emergency responders that uh, were there that night from the Volunteer Ambulance Corps, the Volunteer Fire Department, as well as her uh, other brother and sister uh, police officers. Um, I knew when the town hired Kim three years ago that we had someone special. Not only was Kim, uh, she was a transfer from Rutgers University, so we didn't have to send her to the academy. She, she came on basically a little field training and was out there working as a police officer. But we, we also hired a woman, a Hispanic, and somebody that's bilingual. And uh, that's very important because you want, you always want your police department to represent and to reflect the population of the town that they're working in. So we were very fortunate for that. She's only been on three years, but already she's received several awards and praise from the police department and the community. She's well respected among her peers because she always conducts herself in a professional manner and knows what it takes to get the job done. She gets that, she gets it. She gets that it's all about the public, serving the public. It's obvious she loves helping others and it shows in her performance. It's difficult right now for police officers, it's a difficult time to be a police officer. Their actions are under a microscope and many of them are, over, many people are overcritical. Kim has a rare ability to shrug off that kind of criticism and show compassion, tolerance, and understanding. We are very, very fortunate to have her here in Saddlebrook. 
I have a uh, proclamation, but you know I'm not going to read it right now. But I do have somewhere here. There it is. A certificate from Congressman Bill Pascrell, which simply reads: Certificate of Special Congressional Recognition presented to Miss Kimberly Diaz of the South of the Police Department. Okay. This is from Congressman Pascrell. At this time, I want to invite up county freeholders, Steve Tonelli and Tracy Zer. Okay. Okay. I don't think I'm going to need the microphone. So, I just, good evening, everyone. It's really a pleasure and honor for us to be here today. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we haven't been able to present certificates personally. We did have Officer Diaz in one of our WebEx meetings where we were able to uh, congratulate her as a group. But tonight we want to come personally to, um, to present the, the resolution. So the resolution states, whereas on September 8, 2020, Officer Diaz utilizing her quick thinking and calm demeanor to safely assist an emotional distress team perched on a concrete bridge of the outlaw, uh, Outwater Lane overpassing Garfield threatening to take their life. And whereas Officer Diaz applied her training and uh, used safely and compassionately de-escalated the individuals experiencing a mental health crisis to avoid a tragic outcome. And whereas Officer Diaz's heroic efforts are an inspiration to all of us that serve as a reminder of the selfishness and tireless work of her and other law enforcement officers who put themselves in harm's way to keep us safe. Now, for, now therefore be resolved that Bergen County Board of Chosen Freeholders, soon to be commissioners, hereby Declare October 1st, 2020, Officer Kimberly Diaz Day. So, just I just want to say, having two kids that are first responders and under the scrutiny and the stress that you guys are under day in and day out now, um, we really want to make a point of emphasizing the positive impacts that you're having on the community and especially our children. With what's going on across the country, our children are, are suffering. Um, whether it's depression, they're suffering anxiety, not being able to go back to school. It's so important that each and every one of us reach out to our, our youth to try and let them know they're not alone, let them know that there's help out there. And I can't tell you from the bottom of our hearts how much we appreciate your efforts. So. Um, I'm not as loud here on my mask, so I'm gonna take the microphone. I, I just, you spoke at our meeting about how you relied upon your training. And, and that is something that is so important to us, the county to continue to support make sure that we are equipping all of our law enforcement and first responders with that training, with the tools. But what really shone through on that night was your heart, was your compassion, was the ethics that you were raised with, was the ethos that you internalized through your department. All of this contributed to your fast thinking on that evening and has led to this commendation here this evening. We are so grateful that you have given this young person an opportunity to continue to make a positive impact, to see a light at the end of the tunnel. And, and that is so important. Steve touched on it perfectly. You know, we are dealing with this time of isolation. We are dealing with this time of stress for our children. This is, these are not normal times. I'm standing here in a mask and I'm not able to hug or kiss anyone and this is bizarre. Um, but but it, is, it is putting all of us, all of our first responders in a special place where you have to even be more extraordinary and what you were that evening was extraordinary. So thank you so much on behalf of all of our colleagues, on behalf of Kenny Executive and Tedesco, um, but really on behalf of all of us in Bergen County. Thank you for, and continue to please keep up the good work and stay safe. by all this attention, so we will make this quick. Um, the council also has a resolution 
in honor of uh, Officer Diaz. Whereas the Saddlebrook police, Saddlebrook police Officer Kimberly Diaz, I can't do it, I'm sorry, responded to a call on September 8, 2020 on the outward of lean overpass. And whereas immediately upon arriving at this, on the scene, police officer Diaz realized that serious situation was unfolding involving a destroyed juvenile on the overpass, threatening to do bodily harm and quick action was needed. And whereas police officer Diaz from the onset put her training and compassion to use and spoke to the juvenile diffusing a tense situation that could have had a tragic outcome. And whereas Channel 7 WABC Eyewitness News recognized police officer Diaz as first responder Friday for her actions taken on September 8th. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Township Council of the, Sa of the Township of Saddlebrook that hereby commends police officer Kimberly Diaz for her split second action of burning a tragedy and proudly recognizes her work with the Saddlebrook Police Department as she epitomizes what a police officer may confront each day protecting the residents of Saddlebrook. So, Kim, I'd like to now present you with this on behalf of the Township. And the Township. Coolidge here to say a few words, and, and you may want to say a few words also. It's up to you, but after he talks, you might not want to. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to thank the Mayor Council of Saddlebrook. I want to thank our uh, freeholders and everybody else. Uh, but more importantly, we're here to thank Officer Kimberly Diaz because uh, Officer Kimberly Diaz on that night uh, saved someone from, from death. Uh, that person uh, undoubtedly would have probably felt to uh, the person's death. It was a dark night like now, driving up Route 46, very easy not to see anything in the roadway, and it definitely would have been a tragic consequence uh, of an emotional time. The person here in Southbrook just had an emotional day, and we thank God that Officer Diaz was the police officer, and there were some other police officers there as well. Officer Morales was here. Garfield police spotted the person there. But as they were talking to him, nearly 50, 60 minutes it took for the person to say, okay, I'm not gonna do this. But the first 10 minutes, the person knew, I'm more comfortable with this person. Now, I don't know why. I'm not saying the typical police attitude is tough and rough and, and not getting into a person's brain, but for whatever reason, that person said, I'm comfortable with this officer. <laughs> Our officers did the right thing and backed up. And Officer Diaz, till this day, I don't know what was said, but what I know is that Officer Diaz's professionalism and sincere attitude that she carries in life before she became a police officer, she carries that. That's what we want. We want people that are good people, especially in law enforcement positions. And she has that. She has those attributes. So it's important to recognize, and I want to thank the mayor and council for doing what they did tonight. I want to thank the county freeholders, and I want to thank the public, because the public, when we posted this story, came with a number of great comments about the good things that police officers do each and every day. Too much emphasis is on things that aren't true. Not true in Satterbrook. We're not throwing water bottles and bricks at police officers in Satterbrook. We're not defunding anything here in Satterbrook because Satterbrook, like many communities, not only in New Jersey, but across the United States, are communities that care about their law enforcement and public safety. And you know what they care about? They care about the residents. Because if you're not safe in your house, if you feel unsafe in your street, 
you don't want to be there. I know the residents in South Africa want to be here because of the support they get from their law enforcement, and more importantly, who governs and directs the law enforcement, our town government. So, folks, and DS, thank you for what you've done. I know you don't want these accolades, you don't want really the fanfare that comes with it, but you deserve it, and we respect you for your professionalism, saving a life here in South Africa. May God bless you, may God bless all of us. Thank you. and say, hey, some idiot's with a, a muffler. He's half a mile away. He's already in North Florida or Colorado or someplace else. So it's very tough. If they come upon it, uh, that may be a reason to stop the vehicle. So there, and then once you stop the vehicle for a motor vehicle offense, a lot of times there's like a chain reaction because they don't have the registration. And they, might have, they might have something in the car that they shouldn't have. Uh, but it's one of those things where if they don't see it, it's an enforcement action, but it's, it's tough to enforce because it's almost like going through a stop sign. Now, unless the officer is there and sees it, you can say there's people going through the stop sign, but unless the officer is there and they don't see it, then it's tough to do it. Now, you live in between Nightingale and Floral Lane. So, from your observation, there's a there's a stop sign at Nightingale and Cambridge, which is a stop sign. Uh, on both ways, you know, going east and also on Nightingale. There's also a stop sign on Fairlawn Parkway in Cambridge. So are they passing your house, uh, as you're looking at your house, from left to right or right to left? 
because they have to go. They're only going three, three, they're coming three down, houses. Coming down Cambridge mm -hmm. towards the field. Okay. And blowing through the stop sign. Going through stop sign. That's. And that's they're driving you. sometimes 50, 60 miles an hour. I can't even. You know, somebody told me to try to get a plate. There's no way I can make that to the street that right. fast. Uh, you know, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. That in in the summer it was really prevalent. I have somebody 5:30 in the morning. I could hear them come three blocks away and wake me up. Because if, if if they do stop at the stop sign, it's almost impossible to get to a speeding. You know, I guess they could jam on the on the gas, but you're only three or four houses from the stop sign. So in order to get there, they'd have to blow through a stop sign either on Nightingale and make a fast turn or just go they go, go, go straight yeah. through there. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to bring it to the council's attention, sure. the police department's attention. Yep. I do see them occasionally in Smith School a lot, you know, but I think it's slowed down by then. Mm -hmm. They're blowing past my house, really speeding. And the noise, like I said, I know, it, I know it's a difficult situation to deal with, but to me, there is no, uh, if, if you hear someone coming from four blocks away, that there's something wrong, mm -hmm. you know, but I don't know who they are, you know. So I just wanted to bring it to people's attention, so maybe the police department can be alert to this situation that's going on. I appreciate it. And then wondering if we would be able to get a speed bump on Smith. Uh, I know we have. I know that we have one. We have the speed sign there, but getting a speed bump near Smith School isn't going to help you because they're already past you by that time. Correct. Right. I meant like near my house. So when they blow through the stop sign. Well, see, that's the problem. Is they're not supposed to blow through the stop sign. So it's like we don't want to have a stop uh, speed bump right near a stop sign because that's. I mean, if people would, you know, that's the problem. If people would follow the law even kind of follow the law. Even coming through a California stop, they call it, through the stop sign, you wouldn't have that problem. But if they're just totally, I mean, they're taking their lives into their own hands and, and possibly taking other people's lives into, into their hands, which is not a good situation. But we are evaluating all the thoughts. We have a committee and we we felt that the, um, uh, the, the speed sign, the combination of all those stop signs and the speed sign uh, would help uh, mitigate the, the speed concerns. Perhaps it's doing it, perhaps it's not. But I'm going to ask if anyone else is here to talk about speed. There is some, as, as Karen, just one other person? OK, because then I'm going to bring the chief up, because it's an enforcement issue. And who better, since we happen to have the chief? If you can, if you can come up, Ms. Chair, yes. that's the president. I just want to ask uh, Karen. Harry, 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 Harry. Yes. Can you hear me? Is this, is this on? I don't think any of the sound. Is the button, is the green? Hello. There it is. Okay. It the green button's getting up. Okay. It's working out. But Carrie, yes. when it does happen, when you see somebody speeding or somebody with a loud muffler, do you ever call the police because... Oh, it, they're driving 50, 60. Yeah, I, I know, but like even just the description of, a, of the car, the color, you know what I mean? Yeah, maybe, there's, maybe there's a police officer in the immediate area and... You know what I'm saying? At least the bill, and that you know that does. I'm glad you're here because it brings it. The, the chief now is alerted, and it brings it to the attention of the police to keep extra checks. Um, but you know, if, if you do see something, don't feel don't feel funny. Call. I mean, it's not like you're. It's not like you're going to be labeled anything or you know, pain in the neck or anything like that. Believe me, that we we need people to report stuff. Okay. But, you know, I, I I'm telling you because. I get a lot of people that, that contact me afterwards, and and I ask them that, and they say no, and you know of course I, I bring it to the attention of, of the, the chief, but it, you know what I'm saying when it's happening right then and there, it's it's good to call. Yeah, it, it's yeah. good. I try. I have to try yeah. To see a description of the car or whatever if it's a, but I'm t it's hard because I'm in the house with the windows closed. I hear them. And I would have to literally run out the front door, run down the sidewalk, <laughs> get on the sidewalk, and see them slow. Yes. And they're not slow. They're I, not I slow, understand. You know? well, what, what, that's what the mayor's saying, Carrie. Yeah. For example, if you look out your window, you know, you, you hear something or whatever, and you happen to be out there, you know, 
whatever, looking out the front or working in your garden or something like that, and it's a, a green Ford. And you call the police and say, hey, it's a green Ford, that's all I can give you, a green Ford. A week later, it's a green Ford, and uh, you know, three days after that, it's a green Ford. We kind of get an idea of that of what it is. Okay. Um, so that person, you know, the, the police who do regular <coughs> patrols can be looking out. Now, they, if they don't, if they see a green Ford later on, just traveling 22 miles an hour, they can't pull them over. But at least they kind of got an idea of, of who they're looking for. And if that person does get stopped, we know that, you know, that it's one of the people that are, uh, you know, disturbing the, the peace and quiet of the neighborhood. Okay, so please, if, if that happens and you can't get a description, you're, there's no way you're going to get a license plate, unless it's one of those vanity plates that says, you know, uh, you know whatever, cat lover or something like that. Um, just, uh, you know, call it in. It, it doesn't hurt because it'll be on record. Miss, did you want to talk? Thanks. All right, you could just give your name and address, please. Sylvia's on a relative. Oh, you're messed yes. up. Oh, I didn't know. Yes. I know you. 236 Lansdale. To reiterate what Kara said, by Franklin, they fly through on stop sign, you're going to end up only one. Which one? Which stop? On Caldwell and Lanza, right by the school. But that's not really what I was even here for. But I think all school districts should have a thought of speed bump, regardless of which school it is. It slows down the traffic. It's horrible. It really is. But my other complaint is the all-you-can-eat buffet in Walmart parking lot. Okay. Now, I spoke to Pete about this during the course of the month, and they have an outdoor restaurant. Now, I'm not looking to hurt anybody, but on weekends, it has now become an outdoor disco. The ordinance says 10 o'clock, but to your point, what is loud, what isn't, who thinks it's loud, who doesn't think it's loud, whatever. 11 o'clock, they're still out there, and that base is blowing windows out, I swear. By the time you call the cops with the racing and everything, I have called the cops. Both my neighbors have. Cops get there, it's done. So, I don't know. Those are my opinions. Okay, thank you. Okay, Chief, if uh, we'll invite you up. You've heard some some complaints from citizens. I know that the last month at the end of, you can hear me? Or no? I do. Okay. At the end of, uh, or during last month, I asked, uh, I directed the township clerk uh, to ask you to, number one, and we were dealing with Fort Carolina Parker at that time, to have enhanced um, enforcement on Fairlawn Parkway. Uh, so we'd like a report on that, and also uh, a zero tolerance policy. We don't want uh, you know, we don't want people to uh, to get out of it. I mean, it, it, there there should be consequences to, to actions. And three, to do what you have to do or make an attempt to get the speed monitoring device from the county. I don't know if it's available, uh, but now we've got some other uh, complaints near Fairlawn Park, right? Uh, Ms. Hook is on uh, is on Cambridge near Fairlawn Parkway, and Ms. Arelli is uh, you know is on the corner of Lanza and um, Caldwell. and Caldwell. So if you could just address, it's not the only time. Uh, Damon, uh, who lives on Fairlawn Parkway, has come to a number of meetings complaining about uh, the speeding. What we've done is try to attempt to quell it through striping. Uh, and uh, we just need to know, we need the people to know uh, what the police are doing in regard to uh, these complaints, which really have been for the, uh, for the past several months. It's, it's nonstop. I get emails, I get texts, I get videos uh, sent to me of, of what's going on, and they come to the public meetings, so uh, just as you could address the citizens at this point. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Council President, shoot my back. Um, to all others, my best emphasize. Someone's getting my backside. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me talk about well, traffic. You, talk to, you might as well talk to the camera because oh, we know what you look like. <laughs> I'd rather put my backside this way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let me say this uh, traffic safety is important to any community. 
Saddlebrook's not immune to uh, people speeding through town, people with loud radios or motorcycles with baffles and loud mufflers. So, you know, we as people understand that some of these things are a pain in the neck, so to speak. Uh, but when it comes to speeding, speeding, uh, speed kills, basically, speed kills. We're lucky we haven't had too many crashes, too many serious incidents and accidents over uh, the recent period of time, but we've had people killed in town. We've had uh, some serious accidents. So I can tell you the town is trying to do whatever we can. The police department supports what the town has done. Uh, a couple of the initiatives the town has done, those speed boxes, they're mounted on uh, utility poles throughout the town. Um, so there's a lot of them. Now, does that help? It helps some people. It helps some people realize how fast they're going. That's what it's designed for, to tell you and I, the people that really are going to say, ooh, I'm doing 37, I should slow down because it's 25 and it flashes red. Or it flashes too fast. But others, they purposely go over 40, so you don't get the mileage, it just says too fast. So there's a lot of different attitudes out there. And I think the most important thing we need to do as a community is to publicly educate people. So the more we talk about it, the more we bring it up at council meetings, the more the uh, council president, the town council, the mayor, the business administrator, you know, uh, tell me, listen, I want to report what's going on, how many speeding summons, et cetera. Bring it up. The problem with the zero tolerance, you heard about zero tolerance. Zero tolerance is great in theory, but zero tolerance doesn't work. Because zero tolerance means 26, you're getting a ticket. We're not robots. We're not going to give a ticket to somebody we know. Unfortunately, that's what happens, and that's reality. You think if anyone here is pulled over, you think a police officer is going to write him a ticket? Doug, can you answer that question? <laughs> he may, he may. He may be the one. No, if Adam was here, we have a tall cop named Adam Gogoros. Does he work with you, uh, Sergeant? No, he's not. So what you want to find out is when Adam's working. And call the police department and say, can you assign Adam to Gorash on my block? Because that man has zero tolerance. He does not care who you are. <laughs> but the zero tolerance is an issue. So it's not that everybody over 26 miles an hour is going to get a ticket. It's not going to happen, folks. Uh, I can tell you, the reality in a police officer's perspective, on a 25 mile an hour roadway, if someone's doing over 30, he's targeted. He can be targeted. At 29, they're not pulling them over. They, they really are not. Uh, so again, uh, let, let's get back to the community public education part. That's important. And the town has done several things. These speed humps, they're, they're all over town. I, I know people want them on their block. There's people that want them by me on Fifth Street. I live on Fifth and Lansing. Now, I know a lot of people talk about side streets, it's a lot of speeding on your block. Come by my house. Fifth Street or 46 between 46 and Market Street is a big stretch. I can tell you, when I try and come out of Lanza, it's a blind turn. So there are areas in town that are more aggressive to speeders, meaning that they'll speed more. The police Department is trying to do the best we can. The month of September, the council president had the business administrator reach out to the police department and say, zero tolerance, let's get out there. We tried our best. We assigned police. We issued 13 uh, speeding summonses, a number of other type of summonses, uh, but 13 speeding summonses in one month. And I can tell you on this, and it was just going on Parkway on that stretch of blocks. It was a lot because we don't really write that many speeding tickets annually. Um, and again, folks, it's nice to say that we should start issuing tickets to anybody who's speeding. But speeding is, is a problem, not only in Santa Rosa, all of them. As far as the loud bufferers and everything else, the mobile sources of noise, very hard to enforce. The more we enforce stationary noise problems. So it's very hard, unless there's some type of, you know, Scotia bomb car that's coming through town, we know who it is, and the muffler's basically falling off. You could probably target that type of person. But in my opinion, the police officer should pull the person over, find out why this muffler is so loud, and if it just occurred or just a failure of some kind of mechanical uh, device, then maybe give a warning. But if you're driving around with that loud muffler, you know, for three, four months, and we know who it is, we should talk to them. At least give them a warning. He or she give a warning, and then maybe perhaps enforce it after that. But uh, the police department will continue. 
will continue to work with the town and the town residents based on our own your complaints to us and do whatever we can to provide at least a safe and secure community, especially on a block that you may or may not uh, want to, uh, for us to enforce. So please folks, uh, my office, my uh, mindset is always open to talk to people. I'm a lifelong resident of this town. I'm the police chief for 26 years. I can tell you I care and that philosophy is right through the police department. All of our police officers care and want to do the right thing. We got to be careful about RoboCop. You don't want a cop just issue and ticket because you're on 26 plus. So we got to be careful that you don't want that in your community. So I don't know if that answers a couple of things that uh, we brought up, but I can tell you we are always open to discuss community problems. The mayor, my boss, I'm attributable and responsible to him. So if there's anything that you're going to complain about the police department, he will get on me and we'll do what we need to do to satisfy and resolve the problem. So uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Maybe yeah, I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, Chief, I just wanted to, uh, you mentioned speed bumps and, and, and this is our route mentioned that as well. Um, I, I think she brought up a good point. I, I think we should have speed bumps by all the schools. I mean, what's your feeling on that? I mean, you know, I, I mentioned this at a committee. I think they're on the same page as I am, but what's your opinion about having the speed bumps by the schools? The speed bumps work, because I've been through others. They ever go through Garfield? Almost every other street has a speed bump, and they got these up. Just yesterday, where was it? Compton Plains, Compton Plains. I went on this one county roadway that's going up the hill, and almost every hundred yards there was a speed bump. Now you knew it was coming because they gave you the white lines, and, and if you go more than 25, you're going boom. So it does work. Uh, I guess the direct question is, do you want to put it in schools? Uh, I don't know what the cost is. I know the, the sign board's about $2,000 each. So if uh, you guys want $2,000 signs, we can order them, but we got to pay for them. But the speed comes, Mr. Engineer, do you know how much they cost? One speed come. Or you get a deal, maybe, if you buy yeah, one? Yeah, it depends on how many you do. So if you do one a day, it's going to cost a lot more than doing four. Okay. So it depends. I, I don't know what the cost is, but it was said between 600 and 1,000, depending on yeah, you know, exactly. the more, more than that. Yeah. 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 When you include all the signage and striping and all that, it costs, I'm going to give a range of four to six grand. Wow. Well, for one? For one. Twice. But uh, speed hump work. So I have to say yeah. I have to say yeah. 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 I just think around the school it's important that, that you have a lot of People are more cautious. You have signage to let people know that you know slow down. You're in the school zone. And I think a, you know a bump would. Right. Yeah, it, it can't hurt without. Right. Right. Besides the fact, after school hours, those fields are all used for recreation. So there's constantly people. And again, we're getting into the school zones. I know that uh, some schools, most schools, if not all schools, we have that radar box. You know, you come down Mayo Street, you're coming towards the high school middle school, and you got to be going over 25. You got to get that red signal because when you're coming down, there's a lot of you know, force from the car, and the weight of the car, that you know try and get you more than 25. But uh, you want to educate our people. Please drive safely. Please drive uh, the speed limit, which is basically 25 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. And let's uh, let's all have a safe community. And if there's any complaints, uh, please filter them directly to the police department, through the mayor's office, through the town council, our business administrator, we're all here to help. And we want to do the right thing for our community. So thank you very much. And Mr. Council President, sorry for my backside. No problem. <laughs> uh, when, when I was talking about zero tolerance, I didn't mean 26 miles an hour. That means once they got the ticket, that the ticket was, that they're not going to be able to call somebody and say, hey, can you help me, can you help me out? Uh, no. Well, once you get the ticket, you got the ticket. Uh, we know that our policemen are, are not robots, and no one's enforcing 26 miles an hour. Uh, there, there, there is some uh, discretion and there is some leeway. But the the uh, zero tolerance that I was talking about was more in terms of after you get the ticket, don't be calling up and asking for, for favors. And don't expect, although I know PDA cards uh, are, are handed out, uh, it may not work. 
Because if you're going 45 in a 25 zone and there's kids in that area, you know, you, you may not get the uh, courtesy that you, you think you might get, and that and that officer may be getting a call who issued that that card saying that this person that you want to help, basically you want courtesy to be given, wasn't courteous to our residents because this is a serious problem and we do take it very seriously. Um, but uh, since the chief is here, I'm going to ask if, if you can get that speed that speed box to try and make that, that attempt. I'm not even sure if it's there anymore, but I know at some point it was. It is there. Okay. Um, the other thing about, uh, in terms of, unfortunately, we've got to wait until we're done. You want to talk? Yeah. Okay. After, okay. after this, after this kind of, uh, well, this was about the speed Yeah, I'm going to ask you to come up in a second. Um, in terms of, of the speed bumps, uh, yeah, we, we do have a criteria, and one of the criteria is schools. Actually, well, I asked about Caldwell, and Caldwell, this is the first time, Sylvia, that anyone has mentioned Caldwell. I talked to Joey Palazzotti, who was directly across the street, um, you know, about it. He didn't say anything, not that he's the be-all and end-all, but, you know, that's why we like people to give us information, because we don't know. Uh, Carrie's talking about a uh, speed bump on that side, but that's a couple hundred feet, or, you know, maybe 150 feet from the stop sign. I haven't really heard of anybody near the school saying that. Maybe they're just shy, but we encourage people I'll to... I'll videos from my... No, I, I, not, I don't disbelieve anybody. I'm just saying, we have to know about it. We go around and look for things, and we really are are going around uh, following people's complaints. We, and like I said, we kind of know where the problem is. We know there's a problem on, on Farrell Parkway. We know there's a problem on Wilson. We, we know there's a problem on, on certain streets that are cut through streets. Laurel is, uh, is a cut through, and it, all, it also is a, uh, it's also near a school. So uh, we, we will be uh, reviewing this. This is an ongoing, it's the first year, like I said, I've lived here for 35 years, we never had one speed bump. Now we've got 10. So, you know, it, it, it's a work in process uh, together with our engineer, uh, Kathy Gallo's on the committee, Todd, uh, myself. Uh, we have unofficial members of our police department that are uh, helpful uh, in pointing out problem areas. So it is a work in progress and we will definitely take those areas into consideration. And again, they are good sites because they do meet the criteria of being near, at or near a, a school. So. Uh, those definitely will be uh, will be looked at. Nancy, just, just for the chair, just real quick. Uh, to, to Bob, Bob Klein, I know when um, when we looked into putting a speed bump over on uh, President Street. I know Rick was here at the time, and I know Remington has one of those speed counters. I don't know if we have run into a problem with the county. Um, is there any way that we can try to uh, get that speed counter from, from you guys if you still have it? Yeah, I'll look into it. Okay, thank you. Cool. Nancy Murray, Pine Avenue. Um, regarding the speed bumps, we were having a conversation, and I've been in other towns where there's a lead up of about 10 or 15 feet where they have the little arrows that tell you it's coming. Some of the speed bumps here, you just come on them and it's a dark if you're in a low car. Like a friend of mine with a Corvette. He's like, I hit those things, I can't even see them. Do they do they use um, reflective paint on the, on the speed bumps? Because I'm not really out in the dark finding the speed bumps. They're not by me where I travel, so when I do come across them, I take a lot of care, but it's usually in the daytime, so of course you're going to see the paint. But at night, you're not going to see the paint if you have a low car. You're not going to know it's there. But at least with those lead up of, of lines, and I've been into communities where they have, you know, like every, you say every 30 feet, you got another set of these little arrows that go up to the sea bump. It kind of lets you know that the sea bump is coming. So I'm wondering if, if that has been considered and if it's more proper to me, because I'm not out at night where there's sea bumps. Well, we do have a, uh, a sign, 150, I think it's 150 feet before it, saying speed bump, 150 feet. 
there's another sign there saying speed hump. There's the, the speed hump with the signs. I did talk to the engineer because uh, about that exact same issue. So I'm going to just uh, leave it to Bob, to, to, uh, Bob Klein, our engineer, to see if I don't think that they are required, but they may they may help. And personally, I, I think we should have them, but uh, I'm one person. Uh, 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 MU TCD, it's an option. It's not required, it's an option, and probably no big deal to add them. I, I know that by four lane it would interfere with the crosswalk, so you can't have it. It depends on the area, but um, when they're doing striping, Bob, you know that, that when I talked to you, I thought that they were a, a, a good idea. So, um, you know, maybe we can, when we're re-striping everything, when we're doing uh, some paving, and they got, I guess they're going to be doing, are they doing any striping when they're doing paving? Yeah, at any time. So we can uh, we'll maybe time. work, maybe we can work on that. Okay. Okay. Any other member of the public wish to address the council while we're in open session? Well, just, Sir? Uh, I, come, you got to come up. Yeah. You gotta, uh, don't go on Hillside Avenue. I didn't know you were going to get on, on speed bump so quick. So I was wondering if did you get the change order for Hillside? Yes. Okay. That's that really for me. I wasn't going to ask that one. And that will be part of the next go round, which we're starting. They're starting to do. Um, before they, they do the milling and paving, because uh, what you've seen recently that was 2019 and PSNG, now it's us doing it. So we're doing the, uh, the road work in terms of the, the uh, aprons and the curbing and the uh, handicapped ramps on the corners. So once that is done, then we'll do the milling and paving. And then as part of the paving part of it, which comes last, unfortunately, uh, we'll be doing the speed bumps. So, yeah. right, Is there anyone else that wishes to address the council? Seeing none, I will let the same motion close the meeting to the public. Second. Ms. Dominio and Mr. Garrett with the second roll call. Councilwoman Dorminio. Yes. Councilman Garrett. Yes. Councilman Councilwoman Mazur. Yes. Council President Simulica. Yes. Okay, we'll get uh, kind of council comments and we'll end up with the mayor who usually uh, does a wrap up for us. Karen, we'll start with you. Uh, we were planning a trunk or treat for Halloween for the children at 55 Mayhill Street and we were doing it six feet apart with the cars and we're going to have special police officers and registration desks. Unfortunately, a report came out and it was uh, from the CDC that suggested that Halloween should not happen. So we have canceled it because we don't, we want to be sure that everybody is safe. And um, so effectively, immediately, it is canceled. Um, I don't think we're even going to have a tree lighting ceremony, but we'll see if we could do that. It just seems this is a very difficult year. And I don't think we'll have any events, really. But we will look into it in November. Uh, we thought being outside that it would make a difference, wearing masks, taking temperatures. But apparently, it's not a good idea. So we are not going to go forward with anything at this point. Uh, the second thing, I just want to commend our police officer, Kimberly Diaz. Uh, she was very humble and gracious with all the, the awards she got. And certainly, she did uh, an outstanding job. And in the world we live in, um, I think all the police do a great job. And especially, she did an exceptional job. And I'd like to thank her for that. Um, lastly, uh, we did a moment of silence for Lenny Azarum, who was a retired police officer who served on Saddlebrook Police Department for 30 years. He also was the creator, as council president said, of the SBC TV. And he had really no formal training. And he did, he, it was incredible what he did. He did a lot of, he worked on the D.A.R.E. program. And he did a lot of videos, if you remember back then. He had a lot of funny videos. And he also did a lot for the night out. So, I want to extend my condolences to his wife, his children, and his grandchildren, and he will be really missed in our community. 
Some people are putting up uh, signs on, on telephone poles and stuff saying garage sale. Even people that are registered are putting that up. Like, how would we did just somebody it. from Barfield know that we're doing a town garage sale? We did put it out in the uh, community news, mm -hmm. uh, box on, uh, because uh, that's the only way you get these published <laughs> way in the paper. So we did do a box ad that was in the community news it's on the website. Uh, it's on our TV station website. It has uh, daily updates and the addresses, alphabetical order. So uh, if you go to the website, SouthworthNJ.us, <coughs> you'll be able to view all the addresses. And as Council Major said, it's Saturday, Sunday. If there's an asterisk next to the address, they only wish to have the garage sale on Saturday. But we have over 200. It's our first town wide garage sale. When Councilman Mazur suggested we're going to do it in the spring, and then COVID did. So it's a good time to do it because the University Street Fair was canceled. We picked the first weekend in October, and uh, so far, we've been good. It should be fine. And I believe it's also on the uh, digital billboard. Yes. It's been advertised. Yes, so anyone passing Market Street uh, should be aware of it. Councilman Garrett? Thank you. Uh, good evening. First, I'd like to also commend Officer Diaz for her heroic actions in the line of duty. Great job, South is very proud. Uh, next, I'd like to acknowledge National Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, during National Hispanic Heritage Month, the United States government celebrates the countless contributions of more than 60 million Hispanic Americans to our culture and society. Hispanic Americans are the largest minority group in the United States today and generations of Hispanic Americans have consistently helped make our country strong and prosperous. They contribute to our nation beyond description. Hispanic Americans embody the best of our American values, including commitment to faith, family, and country. They serve in our military and protect us as members of law enforcement. In fact, Hispanic Americans make up half of our Border Patrol agents. The Hispanic American community has left an indelible, indelible mark on our government, culture, and economy. The Department of State celebrates Americans' rich his, historic uh, Hispanic history and culture with National Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th to October 15th. National Hispanic Heritage Month with roots going back to 1968 celebrates the anniversary of independence of five Latin American countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. Mexico, 
Chile and Belize also celebrate their Independence Day during this period. Columbus Day in Mexico is on October 12th. During National Hispanic Heritage Month, we recognize the contributions and the important presence of Hispanic and Latin Americans in the United States and within the department. In commemoration of the 2020 National Hispanic Heritage Month, the department highlights biographies of outstanding Hispanic employees with support diplomatic efforts around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Derek. Uh, pig, pigtailing on that, uh, we would uh, be remiss if we didn't mention October is also Italian American Heritage Month. Uh, Columbus Day celebrated on October 12th. Unfortunately, uh, we will not be having the Columbus, uh, the Unico Street Festival, which uh, coincides and coordinated with Columbus Day. Usually, there's a actually there is a uh, ceremony. I believe at 12 noon at the yeah, October 10th, Saturday, October 10th, and that will be at uh, basically Columbus Park by the American Legion Memorial over there on the corner of Welcome and Market Street. So anyone wants to join, wear your masks, and uh, we will be uh, you know, honoring uh, Columbus and various uh, people of Italian American descent. Uh, Lenny Adams Brown, unfortunately, after a long illness, passed away. Lenny was a great friend to have. He was also uh, not a good person to uh, have a, have against you because Lenny was uh, he he was very very strong in his opinions. And if you were in his crosshairs, uh, you you got it. And believe me. There were a lot of times where we piled around, and there was a lot of times where I was in his crosshairs. And many jib-jab uh, things of, uh, of me looking really, really worse than I normally look uh, on, on videos all over the place. And uh, not only was he uh, the founder of SBTV, but he also was a frequent contributor to NJ.com, when they had the, the Saddlebrook Forum, and uh, uh, under, under his real name and under maybe 20 other names. But uh, Lenny was a uh, great guy to have around. He did a lot for the community, and uh, we mourn his loss. Um, in terms of the speeding, I don't want to beat that horse, but uh, Bob, have you gotten anywhere with Fair One in terms of having them also do the same thing we did? So this way it's not a raceway, then it comes to us and it narrows? Yeah, they, they told me they were going to do it. Uh, they told me they were likely going to do it as part of their road program. At the time I talked to them, this was maybe a month, first month and a half ago, they said they were going out the day next month. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't get done until later in the fall if they're paid money. Can you follow up on that for Sure. Okay. And the chief was here and I heard just blew past me. Uh, if you could just uh, direct the, the court, if you could just see if I think the chief would be the best person to contact Fairlawn and their police department. We're having an enhanced uh, enforcement on Fairlawn Parkway and obviously other places. Um, it would be great if they also had it on that same street because if they're coming in from Broadway, coming towards Saddlebrook, they got to go through Fairlawn to get to us. And if they are going through Saddlebrook to get to the Dr. Donald's where they're going, um, maybe if there's enhanced enforcement by fair one on their end, that would also stop. There were 36, uh, Chief Lopez, there were 36 summonses issued from September 3rd uh, through yesterday on fair one Parkway. Some of them were speeding, I think 13 or 14 were speeding. But the interesting part was of those 36 summonses, 17 were Saddlebrook residents. So, you know, we, we talk and talk and talk, but sometimes it's our own people that do it. It's, it's a lot of outsiders, but it's our own people. So we just got to talk to our friends, relatives, children. Uh, I don't know the, uh, the breakup of, the breakdown of the, uh, of the age of, of these people, but uh, from a couple of stories that I've heard, when people get the tickets, a uh, typical, typical story is, uh, hey, 
my kid got a ticket. Yeah, why? Oh, well, he was being tailgated by somebody else, so he had to speed up to 45, and, uh, and then he, he got pulled over. But, but the guy who was tailgating, the cop saw both of these people dropping 45, and the guy going five feet past, you know, behind your kid. He didn't get pulled over first, it was your kid that got pulled over, and the other guy got away? Yeah, that's what happened. No, it didn't. I'm sorry. It didn't happen that way. Yeah. Officer Hedman back there, he can attest that. We hear a lot of stories uh, from people after they get pulled over, and almost all of them are nonsense. Uh, speaking of uh, Officer Hedman, one of the side of finest, uh, we appreciate Officer Diaz uh, and uh, men and women like Officer Hedman and the others in Saddlebrook, in the Saddlebrook Police Department who really uh, epitomize uh, the protect and serve motto. Uh, they go out there, they do their job, uh, they are tough when they have to be tough and they, are, uh, they have empathy when they need to and they're just a, a proud reflection on uh, Saddlebrook, and Doug, I don't have a, you don't owe me any money or anything like that, I'm trying to get it, but, uh, you know, I, I just appreciate everything that, uh, that you people do. Uh, there is some talk on social media again about defund the police, it's all garbage. Uh, don't believe anything. If you read it, uh, we really appreciate uh, the police and all our first responders, and we go out of our way to not only recognize them, but to give them all the tools that they need in terms of equipment, in terms of apparatus. So thank you for that. And I will turn it over to the mayor. And after the mayor, I think uh, Mr. Ludico is going to address everyone uh, one final time about the election and how we're going about the Mayor? OK. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I do have a proclamation for breast cancer awareness month. month. Uh, I'm going to read it. Um, whereas October is National Breast Cancer Awareness Month and October 19th is National Mammography Day. And whereas for women in the United States, breast cancer is the most common form of cancer uh, except for skin cancers. Every woman should uh, know the risk and what they can do to help lower them. Whereas mammography is an x-ray of the breast, it can detect breast cancer up to two years before physical symptoms can be seen or felt. And whereas death rates from breast cancer have been declining, and these changes are thought to be the results of treatment advances, earlier detection through screening, and increased awareness. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Robert D. White, the mayor of the township of Saddlebrook, New Jersey, do hereby proclaim the month of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I encourage our residents to become educated and informed about programs and services that offer early detection and to also celebrate the survivors and memorialize those who have lost the battle. Thank you. Uh, I just want to mention Kim Diaz. I mean, she's, isn't, she, isn't she really something special? Um, I can tell you this, she's definitely a contender for next year's Women in History. <laughs> she's one of the top contenders. So um, I, I want to give a, a COVID-19 update. Um, really have some good news. I, I, I listened to Governor Murphy's uh, address. He gives a daily address um, today, and everything was pretty positive. Um, he said that he feels that we're in a much, we're much better shape than when the pandemic began. And he actually noted that uh, because of better medical knowledge of the virus, uh, face covering orders, social distancing plans, bed capacity at hospitals, a backlog now of ventilators and PPE, and increased testing and contact tracing, um, that because of those reasons, he'd be shocked, and he used the word shocked, if we had to shut down completely again. He feels that we were in pretty good shape. And I know he had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with Dr. Fauci, and um, the doctor was saying that, you know, we've done a good job in, in, in this state, and uh, we're on the road to recovery, and things are starting to open up fully. Not yet, but slowly and but surely things are going to open up fully. And that brings me to schools. Um, schools are, happy, I'm happy to say, they're operating under a hybrid model. Uh, that's a combination of in-school in uh, classroom and remote learning. And I'm also very happy to say that so far we've had no reported cases of any student or staff member contracting, contracting COVID. Um, the Saddlebrook numbers 
uh, the total that we get from the county and the state, they're up slightly uh, this month. We went from between, se between September, beginning of September and now October, we went from 322 um, to 334, so we're up 12. Um, yeah, it could be because of uh, Labor Day weekend, but the, you know what? The number of deaths has remained the same. It's still at 19. And, and as uh, Council President Simaluka said last month, yeah, you know, I don't know anybody that's really very, very sick. I mean, it could be, but you know, usually you hear when someone is, is suffering, they're in the hospital and uh, on a ventilator and such. They, they usually, you usually hear it. So. Fortunately, it seems like most of the cases are, are minor symptoms. Uh, but, but that being said, we have to be careful to exercise uh, caution, face covering, social distancing, and good hand hygiene. Those are all important. And you know what? It's good if we do that, that we can protect ourselves from the common flu, the common cold, and uh, hopefully we'll have less sickness. Um, as Councilwoman said, uh, <laughs> you know, many of us said, okay. Oh, we decided not to have the trunk or treat this year. Um, and I too believe that we could have done it safely, uh, but it really, because of the CDC and, and, and um, guidelines that they came out with, but um, really to be consistent with the school district. I, you know, I, I, I wanted to, you know, they're working on the very heavy restrictions right now. I mean, the kids are. You know, they're in class, but I think it's like eight hours a week. They split it up. Um, so they're not really getting much in class. Um, and they're under these restrictions from the State Department of Education and the CDC and others. Um, but, you know, I, I feel it's important that we send a clear message that when it comes to our kids, we're going we're gonna to exercise or we're going to act under a, an abundance of caution. Um, everyone that I know wants their kids to be safe. And they want them to remain in school. It's very important to the parents. They really don't want to go back, go backwards, where they got to do all remote learning. So I think we're, we're I think it was a good decision. Um, tax bills will be going out next week. There's uh, a letter from yours truly with the bill. Uh, the municipal tax rate is 0.81 cents per $100 of assessed value. The average home assessed at $353,112. Um, the municipal tax is 2864 an increase of $96.99. Um, the average increase, um, I believe this number's right, uh, Pete can tell me if I'm wrong, but the total average is $113 total, including the school district, the county, and everything else. And I, I got a hand to the school district. They did a pretty good job of keeping, you know, keeping their, their budget down. Um, I want to thank Columbia Bank for a donation. Um, they donated $30,000 um, to the township. Um, the town has been granted tax exempt status. We received the 5013C from the federal government. Uh, we did so because we formed a foundation to utilize funds for charitable community projects. And we hope to use that 30,000 coupled with, um, I believe, we're going for an open space grant um, to uh, restore Congress Street Park. Um, election video, Pete's gonna talk about that, but he did a video today with the county clerk, John Hogan and others. Um, I, I know the residents have quite a few questions about this mail-in balloting. Um, if you watch that video, it's going to be on the website, Facebook, and, and the town TV. Um, also, too, if, if you want further information, um, the Bergen County uh, Clerk's Office, uh, that website, it's cobergen.nj.us, that's cobergen.nj.us, or the, the New Jersey website has a lot of information, nj.gov, that's nj.gov. So if you're looking for more information, there's, there's quite a bit there. But there, a lot of people have questions about it and they're concerned. Um, paving, the paving should be done um, by the end of the year. Uh, the town road improvement program, um, there's five streets which they should be starting this, the uh, concrete 
within the next week. Uh, but the five streets are Jamrose, Colonial, Woodcrest, Taggart, and Dana. Um, they should all be done, um, hopefully, by, uh, I, I would hope by in sometime by the end of this month or early November. So we're going to be stuck getting the cold weather. Uh, public service gas and electric, this main, their uh, gas main project, there's two streets, Steinway and Hobson, that still have to be done. I'm unsure whether or not we're going to get to them this year. Um, they do have the trenches, and the trenches are filled. Um, the roadway's not too bad, but I, I, if we can get to it this year, we will. We have to look at the money situation. Uh, we may end up putting it off till next year and do it in the spring as part of the 2021 town road project. So we'll see on that. Um, the last day of voter registration is Tuesday, October 13th. Uh, town hall will be open. Uh, Pete will be there until 9. You can also pick up leaf bags. Um, the leaf bags will be available starting next week at Town Hall. Uh, they're going to be put in the vestibule uh, of, of Town Hall, uh, 10 per household. It's going to be the honor system. We're not going to have people come in and sign things. And so hopefully, I, I, I'm pretty sure we can trust everybody to take their dead. Um, the flagpole that was installed on Saddle River Road and Route 80, uh, and we or also ordered uh, a welcome to Saddlebrook sign. It's a great location. It's on Saddle River Road um, between the two ramps. Um, the, the, the ramp from 80 going east and uh, the off ramp and the on ramp to 80 going west. It's right in the middle there. Very good location. I've received a lot of accolades about that. Um, we have a lot of patriotic people in, in town, and uh, they really, it's a big hit. Uh, I want to just say, too, that um, former Mayor Darminio, that was something that he always wanted to do, didn't get around to it, but it took, it took us, well, it took us six years, yeah. right? <laughs> Karen was the, so it took us 10 years, but we got to it. We got it. And uh, I, I really think it's, it's, a, it's a great location. Um, the gazebo at Tricentennial Park has been delayed due to COVID-19. Um, I, I really don't know where we're at. Pete might have a little more information with that. I, I know that uh, we called them. I spoke to them. We should be getting delivery Wednesday. Okay. And that's like a prefab. We were thinking that we, that they would come through. Maybe we have a contractor build it for us. But I think we're better off with the one that uh, we ordered. So hopefully that will come through. Um, I want to briefly mention too that uh, this is in the early stages, but um, I, I spoke to our town attorney, Anthony Suarez. He has this uh, this communication company uh, that he uses. It's no fee. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to look into one of the councilmen is is, is now uh, was responsible for getting them. But basically, what what it is is um, it's a free service. It's a web-based service that what they do is um, they take every every part of the town the, the town uh, itself you know the town government the board of ed um civic groups and and they look through their calendar and they make one main calendar you got to go online to you know find a calendar but it has everything in one place right now we have on, on our website a lot of people don't know this and I'm, I'm saying this because we get a lot of complaints um mostly on facebook but when we post something positive an event we'll get you know i didn't know anything about like the shredding event i didn't know anything about it you know and then you get like five or six you know comments that people you know something that was positive and you know like i guess they didn't know about it but we do everything we can you know right now uh, we use the we use the digital signboard in front of town hall uh, we, we, we uh put it on the facebook so there's a website calendar that has all the events and well in advance um, you know, sometimes if we can, you know, with people, they want to use Mixel. Mixel is for emergency purposes. So it's an emergency response, um, an emergency notification. I mean, we can get away with it if we're closing the streets down and we have a big event. But, you know, like the Unico Street Fair, or things you can be blocked. You know, it's, you can get away with it, but you're really not supposed to use that. But anyway, this, this service, I'm hoping, and they rely on ads. So, um, it's no cost to the town. So hopefully, maybe that'll be something. 
I, I don't I don't know. I thought Anthony. Um, I, I heard somebody said they might um, send you send you emails, send you an e email, your calendar. I, I don't know if that's true. That would be great because you know, they get an email with the, with the information right there in front of them. They wouldn't have to go anywhere. But uh, so we're going to look into that. I also uh, sympathize with the Azaro family. Um, and he was one of a kind. <laughs> he really was. He was, he was uh, yeah, everybody remembers him as video cop, but I remember him as being a really good, scrappy cop. I worked with him on the road, and uh, let me tell you something. For a little guy, he can handle himself. You know, he can talk himself in and out of any situation. He was, he was good. Um, you know, whether it was a fight or whatever, he was right in there all the time. He, he was an excellent cop. A lot of people don't know that because they remember him, and, and he did that. So many accomplishments. Uh, you know, he really, he really was way ahead of his time uh, when it came to technology and videos. And, um, and he, with those dare videos, he, he really put us on the map with that. Um, okay, I just want to mention Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur were celebrated this month by our Jewish friends. I hope all of them enjoyed their holy days. Um, that's it. Uh, and happy Halloween. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Ladico, do you want to uh, just address the, the viewers? Thank you, Council President. Just briefly, as the Mayor mentioned today, we did a taping with uh, Bergen County Clerk John Hogan, our Bergen County Superintendent of Elections, Patricia DiCostanzo, and our Bergen County Deputy Superintendent of Elections, Teresa O'Connor. Probably about a 30, 40 minute program, but it's very informative. If you get a chance to catch it, it will be on our website. And it will be on Our Town TV. We're not on schedule yet, uh, but uh, again, very informative. Some of the highlights, again, we talked about this last month. When you get your ballot, and we just got confirmation from the county Tuesday, Saddlebrook ballots were mailed. It will be an all mail ballot suggest very strongly the county officials do when you get your ballot, fill it out, mail it in, or there are drop-off uh, boxes where you can drop them off. Our closest ones would be uh, Hasbrook Heights, the behind Borough Hall, 320 Boulevard, Fairlawn, which is at their municipal building. That's 8-01 uh, Fairlawn Avenue behind their Borough Hall. And of course, behind the county administration building, uh, one Bergen County Plaza. And those would be the closest to Saddlebrook. Again, the suggestion is very strongly either you mail it in. If you don't want to mail it in, there will be these drop off locations that you can drop off. They're secure. Bergen County Sheriff's officers are the ones that go around with the county employees to collect the ballots. Uh, election day. You will be able to drop them off. We will have three polling locations open. When you go into the polling place, you will have to sign as if you're voting before you drop your ballot off. Expect long lines with social distancing. We're only going to have three polling places open. Your Washington School, Saddlebrook High School Middle School Gym, and Long Memorial All Purpose Room. And that's for 11 districts. Again, like everything else, do it early, when you get your ballot, review it. It's federal, state, county, local, and Board of Education offices to vote on, plus questions. Please review the ballot when you get it. There will be no sample ballots mailed. So what you get is going to be the actual ballot with the postage paid envelope to mail in. If you decide to mail it in, Please mail it in early because dropping it off in a box at the post office election day will not guarantee your vote will be counted. The post office must postmark it November 3rd. So if you drop it off out here at South of Post Office at 7 o'clock at night, it's before the polls close, but it probably won't be postmarked until the following day. Uh, the other, again, a lot of good points will be on the video. Uh, as far as if your neighbors, your spouse, your children, ask you please, if you're going to such and such location, take mine. Uh, under the law, you can only carry three ballots. 
and uh, you would have to sign as the bearer before the uh, before you pick up the ballot in front of the person that was voting. So it's very important. That's what happened in Patterson. Uh, they emphasized it today on the, on the video that people were taking more ballots than they're allowed to do and dropping them off uh, at voting locations. Again, it was very informative. I'd like to thank John. Uh, Patty Dickstanza and Terry O'Connor for coming today, for taking their time away from their busy schedule uh, to do this video for us. My office is open. Uh, please feel free to call if you have any questions. 201 587 2909. Be happy to leave a message. If I'm not there, we will get back to you. I'm sure everybody has a lot of questions. The ballots are to be done in black ink, they could also be done in blue ink or pencil. Preferences on fracking. The polling places are going to be open, but please bear in mind you will not be able to vote on a voting machine. This is an all mail or drop off election. If you go to the voting uh, location, unless you make certain legal requirements such as legally blind, illiterate, or some uh, disability of that sort, the book workers cannot allow you to vote. So just because the polling place is open, it does not mean you would go and vote on a machine. The best you could do is drop off your ballot that day. And again, a lot of people may decide to do that. So there may be lines uh, with six uh, feet social distancing. We're going to make sure that uh, people are social distancing. So there could be a line. There could be some time before you drop off your ballot, since you do have to sign at the voting location that you drop it off. You don't have to do it if you go to the other place. So the best thing is you can get your ballot, send it in, do it early, don't waste for election day, and just get your ballot in. You've got two, uh, two ways of doing it, by mail or at certain drop-off locations. Town Hall in Saddlebrook this year is not a drop-off location. Do not drop it off at Town Hall. If you do, your vote will not count. So there are certain drop-off locations. It's posted on our website. Please watch the video. It's very, very interesting. Thank you. Chair Pete, just one thing. Um, I know everybody should, should watch the video if you have questions. But if you if you mail in your ballot and say you forget there's a technical error, you forget to sign it or something, do you have a way that you could like, are you notified? And yes, have a way under, to about the ballot? under this particular election of the law. Uh, good point, Mayor. If you forgot to sign your ballot. The county will be sending you a letter, and you have 48 hours to cure or correct the ballot. A lot of people forget to sign it, or the signature may not match what the county has for some reason. Uh, so they will get a letter from the county clerk's office or the superintendent of elections uh, asking them to come in, and you would be able to correct your ballot that way. So that's one of the points that they did mention today. So that's new. We've never had that before. With uh, so they understand people may make a mistake. Uh, if you make a mistake on your ballot, you can request from the county clerk's office and the ballot, they will mail it to you. And uh, if you don't receive your ballot, I would say by the middle of next week, you can call the county clerk's office and um, they will assist you with that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I know uh, about the signature because I know when I registered to vote, I was 18, and my signature was my entire name, a nice cursive letters, and now it's just the name of a line. So I actually went to the polling place and I just signed my name. And that's not you. What do you mean? They had to show me what my, my signature used to look like 50 years ago. 40, 40 years ago. I'm making myself look at uh, so just be careful uh, about the signature. You're not going to be in front of a you're not going to be in front of a poll worker that's going to tell you that it's not there. Just make sure that you sign it as you uh, your signature when you when you register. Basically, pretty much. I got a question, though, Pete. For people that don't watch your video, that don't watch this show, that you know, I don't know, just kind of oblivious to things, and they walk in and they go to the poll worker and said, I want here to vote, and they got nothing in their hands. I don't know what they did with their absent, with their mail ballot, uh, but they certainly didn't bring it with them. 
uh, and they're told at that time, object, over their objection maybe, I want to vote on a machine because I don't trust this system, um, but they don't have a, uh, a mail-in ballot with them. What happens with that person? Good question. They do, uh, each polling place will have what we call provisional paper ballots. So if you don't have your ballot, you lost it, you can't find it, uh, you didn't mail it in on selection day, you can't find it to drop it off, we will have provisional paper ballots. So when you go to a polling place, you will be able to vote on another type of paper ballot. You will have to, re I, I know I did it in, in July for the first time, and it required your driver's license number, so we prepared that uh, your driver's license with you, so you can write your driver's license number down on the paper. You don't, that's not required on the ballot, but if you can vote provisional, that identification has to be put on the ballot. Those ballots are then taken to Bergen County that evening, and it might be a week or so before their count. So the situation is the earlier the votes go in, I think they're allowed to count seven days before the election. I don't know what we'll results, but they could start counting. Anything that comes on election day, I would guess, and we were talking about it today, it'd be at least a week or more before they get to, to count those votes. So. Thank you very much. It's certainly going to be different than any other election. The only thing I could assure everybody, because I said this last month, working with the Bergen County officials that we had, uh, we all strive for the integrity of the ballot, to make sure it's a fair election, make sure every vote counts, and every vote is counted. And that was reinforced today by John Hogan, Patty Costanza, and uh, Terry O'Connor. And I've worked with their staff for many years, and I can assure you, in Bergen County, um, I'm sure that's how it Thank you, Mr. Uh, we're going to go into ordinances now. Uh, first reading, uh, next order of business is introduction of ordinance amending chapter 206-29, article 8, entitled Vision Obstruction on Corner Lots, be passed and adopted on first reading. Is there a motion? Second. Ms. Mazur? Second. Second by Mr. Garrett Roll Call. Councilwoman Dormania? No. Councilman Garrett? Yes. Councilwoman Mazur? Yes. Council President Samuel. Yes, please read the resolution regarding passage and adoption on first reading. Be resolved by the Township Council that an ordinance amending Chapter 206-29, Article 8, entitled Vision Obstruction on Corner Lots, heretofore passed on first reading, be further considered for final passage at a meeting to be held on the fifth day of November 2020 at 7 o'clock p.m. or sooner after this matter can be reached at the Municipal Building, 93 Market Street, and at such time and place all persons interested be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance according to law, with the notice of its introduction and passage on first reading, and of the time and place when where said ordinance will be further considered with the final passage. Is there a motion to approve on first reading? Ms. Mazur. Second. Second by Mr. Garrett. Roll call. Councilwoman Dorminio. Yeah. Councilman Garrett. Yes. Councilman Mazur. Yes. Council President Simula. Yes. So that passes up first reading. And now we go to the uh, consent agenda. Is the, was the change made to the minutes? Yes. Okay. Uh, are we uh, not part of the consent agenda? The minutes of the September 3rd, 2020, resolution number 10, and in Stonebrook for $40. Okay. Not part of all items listed with an asterisk are considered routine and non-controversial by the Township Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member or member so requests it, in which case the item or items will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. The one motion signifies adoption of all resolutions received on file letters correspondence, reports, and approval of minutes and applications. Is there a motion to pass the consent agenda with the uh, removal of the minutes and uh, resolution 10 for the Motion by Ms. Garminio, second by Ms. Mazur. Roll call. Councilwoman Garminio. Yes. Councilman Garrett. Yes. Councilman Mazur. Yes. Council President, Samuel Garrett. 
Okay, and that passes, and uh, we'll have a motion to approve the minutes of the September 3rd meeting. Is there a motion? Motion. Mr. Arminio, second? Second. Second by Mr. Garrett, go for Councilwoman Darminio? Yes. Councilman Garrett? Yes. Councilwoman Mazur? Yes, thank you. Council President Samaluka? Yes. Minutes are accepted. Is there a motion to approve? I'm going to ask you to recuse yourself for the whopping $40 payment to Stonebrook. <laughs> uh, motion to approve the payment to Stonebrook. Is there a motion? Yes. Ms. Darminio? Second. Mr. Garrett with the second. Roll call. Councilwoman Darminio? Yes. Councilman Garrett? Yes. Council President Samuel? Yes. Uh, join us. And, uh, we have a motion to open to the public for agenda items only. Awesome. Motion by Ms. Mazur, second by Ms. Darminio, roll call. Councilman Darminio? Yes. Councilman Garrett? Yes. Councilman Mazur? Yes. Council President Samuel? Yes. The uh, meeting is now open to the public for agenda items. Agenda items only. Seeing no one, I will uh, entertain a motion to close the meeting to the public on agenda items. Motion. Second. Motion by Mr. Arminio, second by Ms. Major. Roll we'll call. Councilwoman Darminio? Yes. Councilman Garrett? Yes. Councilwoman Major? Yes. Council President Samuel? Yes. Yes. Um, Final comments. I, I think I screwed up with old business and new business, but uh, um, we usually roll these together. So, is there any final comments you'd like to make, Karen? Well, I guess I didn't make the work session the other night, um, unfortunately, but my no vote on this ordinance is because um, I think what we have in place is sufficient. Uh, we deal with the safety issue in the original ordinance. To me, this addition is an aesthetic kind of thing, and we're grandfathering in uh, bushes and trees that are already in place, which i kind of confused about how we could do that. So I just wanted to explain why I was voting no. I don't think this is a safety issue, and um, that's why I voted no. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Council President, if I may, I do have a resolution here um, for the month of October. I'd like to recognize specifically uh, Saddlebrook Chapter of Unica. <coughs> whereas October is Italian Heritage and Culture Month, and whereas we take this opportunity to recognize the many contributions made by Italian Americans throughout the United States, New Jersey, and in particular here in Saddlebrook. And whereas we recognize the commitment of the Saddlebrook Chapter of Unico National to our community by supporting programs including Saddlebrook Street Fair, local food banks, awarding scholarships, supporting cake causes such as Jimmy V, Coolies Anemia, St. Jude, mental health programs, and anti bias programs, along with installing benches in Unico Park. And whereas members of the Saddlebrook Chapter of Unico have gone on to serve as Unico District Governor and Unico National President, as well as receiving numerous honors and recognition. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Township Council of the Township of Saddlebrook that the Saddlebrook Chapter of Unico is commended for faithfully following the Unico motto, motto service above self, and recognized for its service to our community as we celebrate Italian heritage and culture month. Okay, uh, that resolution was read after the consent agenda, so we'll have to take a motion to accept the resolution. Motion by Mr. Arminio. Second. Second by Mr. Garrett, also. Councilwoman Darminio? Yes. Councilman Garrett? Yes. Councilwoman Mazur? Yes. Council President Samuka. As a long time and proud member of Unico, yes. Uh, Dave? Okay. Okay. Um, I guess lastly, this is the last meeting uh, before the election. Uh, Pete has uh, laid out the ground rules. It is uh, uh, a different animal than we were used to. Uh, we used to say come out on, in this case, November 3rd and vote, but vote by November 3rd. Um, so uh, you're going to be getting your, your, your mailing ballots. It's not a sample. It's the real thing. Don't toss it out. Tell your kids. 
it's not garbage mail, it's not junk mail. It comes in this big envelope and some people think it's, you know, the value path or something like that. So just make sure uh, a lot of people have died to give you your right to vote. Uh, don't blow it. We've got a lot of uh, good candidates out there, both uh, you know, from the federal on down to us, the local council candidates and the board of ed candidates. So good luck to everyone. It's not easy being up here. Uh, and I've always said it's, uh, it's, it's great to win. It's very, very hard uh, to, uh, you know, it's a difficult thing to lose. So either way, we've got to give a shout out to those who have uh, put in the time, effort, and um, you know, a lot of their own uh, guts uh, to go out there. It's, it's not an easy thing to put your name out there on a ballot go out and, and knock on, well, we can't knock on doors this time, but uh, to go out there and, and speak to people as you see them uh, through masks and socially distance, of course, uh, at the uh, at the ACME and at the CBS and uh, wherever you see them, and ask for their support and tell them what you stand for. Uh, it's very important. So good luck to all the candidates out there, from the big guys on top to, to us on, uh, down on the bottom. Uh, and we'll see you on November 5th after the election. I don't know if we'll be able to tell you if three of us are reelected. I don't know if I'll be able to tell you if uh, Ms. Zanarelli or whoever's running, you know, the other people running uh, for Board of Ed have won. And we don't know if we're going to tell you about the people on top. It's, it's a, a crazy time. But uh, that's the next time we'll, we'll, we'll talk with you. So uh, come out. Make sure you get your vote in. And uh, have a great month. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.